June 11th is a special day, as exactly two years ago I started this YouTube channel. And with what did I kick this whole thing off? With everybody's favorite silly werewolf game, The Quarry. Which without a single doubt is responsible for my channel being where it is today while also introducing me to many great new games, friends and more. But there's also no doubt that I would have never played this game, especially on release day in the first place, if it wasn't for the influence over a game that I've never played myself over the years. And that is Until Dawn. Despite not being able to enjoy it myself as I've never owned a PlayStation in my life, I still enjoyed watching dozens of people play it over the years and I'm so excited to finally enjoy it for myself later this year when the remake releases. But ahead of that, and to celebrate the quarry and my channel's second anniversary, I think it's finally time to release a video that has basically been two years in the making and that I honestly should have released a whole lot sooner. And that is Until Dawn vs The Quarry. Which game is better? We're going to be comparing both games in several different categories that will be listed here on the screen right now. From the characters to the story to the depths to the choices, everything about both games will be taken under the lens in minute detail so that we in the end can decide which game is truly superior to one another. And spoiler alert, the same thing will be done in a video down the road ahead of the release of The Counseling of Frank Stone for the Dark Pages and Dolly Season 1 games. But that is in the future. We are the hero now and now it's time for the battle between supermassive games standalone horror thrillers to decide which game is truly better. So leave a like, comment, subscribe and enjoy Until Dawn vs The Quarry. There's one thing that all supermassive games have in common. Actually, it is more than one thing, as a matter of fact, there are a lot of things in common, but one thing that always sets the tone right off the gate is the prologue, basically chapter zero. In Until Dawn, we see the tragic backstory of Hannah and Beth unfold in front of us, showing us the fateful prank that led to the tragedy of events that would continue to haunt our characters, basically being the reason for the entire story taking place in the first place. This is all done in a very compact and to-the-point way. Everything you need to do, done in 10 minutes, showing all of our characters. In the quarry, we take a different approach as we here focus on only three characters in Laura, Max and Travis, getting a good look at their relationship together, introducing Travis as a mysterious character, all ending in a similar tragic fashion which ultimately sets up for a big mystery for the remainder of the game. Biggest difference between the prologues is the length. While Until Dawn is shorter to the point, the quarry takes more time, gives lots of roaming options and way more dialogue. Ultimately, I think both prologues do a great job at setting the tone for their respective story, both in terms of impact on what's to come and the general atmosphere, but I personally see the Until Dawn prologue as better. It like mentioned that's all it needs to do in a very compact way, while the entire sequence in the forest and at the cliff feels simply more memorable than anything that happens in the Corey's 30 minute prologue. Laura and Max feel genuine together. We set up Travis in a great way, but the only reason this prologue is as dragged out as the way it is, is because we were removing all three involved characters off the screen till we're halfway through the game, and so we had to give them more time here. Until Dawn does it better with less and wins the first category. I've talked about the tone, I've mentioned the atmosphere, so let's take a look at arguably one of the most important aspects of all video games, the setting. Especially in horror, the setting can influence and determine so much about the quality and general enjoyment of the end product. In this case, the settings could not be any more different from one another. In Until Dawn, we're stuck in freezing snowy weather on an indigenous mountain in Canada where you spend time in a warm summer camp in the quarry. Both games do a great job at getting the player around, having them at different locations. While the main focus is on the respective main lodges, we also visit mines, islands, police stations, scrapyards and even sanatoriums. Both settings do a great job at encapsulating the atmosphere that such premises would bring to the table and it honestly all comes down to what you're personally more a fan of. And for me, I personally enjoy Under Dawn setting, but especially locations more. In general, the dreadness of a cold and freezing winter is way scarier and atmospheric than a warm summer camp. Additionally, locations like the mines and the sanatorium specifically just make for the perfect setting for horror media, both sending shivers down my spine just watching others play it. The quarry setting is fun and the tone and vibes are great, but when it comes down to which is better for the overall quality of the game, then Until Dawn setting and locations are superior. 
I've kind of mentioned it already, but given we're talking about horror games, the horror is obviously an important factor. And I think after just getting done with the setting and locations, I believe it's clear which game is scarier. Other Dawn's atmosphere and especially sound design is so damn unsettling in the best way possible, the locations are dreadful and haunting, and the jump scares are very well placed and crafted. And on top of that, it's especially the soundtrack for me. While the quarry uses a sometimes richer sound, but mostly pop songs for a lot of scenes, Under Dawn sticks to a classical influence soundtrack that you can tell were made for a horror game, which is really hits here. I barely felt faced when playing the quarry, that despite actually not having that played many horror games at that point, only a few sections felt intense slowly due to the atmosphere and sound design, and the game got basically like no jump scares. Don't get me wrong, I don't need jump scares, especially in an annoying way, like Man of a Dan, a little hope, but the fear would be great. Even more so when the rest of the game just doesn't scare you whatsoever. And again, don't forget, I never even played Unto Dawn, yet watching others play it had me more on the edge of my seat than playing the quarry myself. The horror category goes without a single doubt to Unto Dawn. While the story and characters are at the forefront, and we will get to those later, are we obviously still playing a video game? So, which game got the better gameplay? To some degree, both games are basically the same in the core. Wandering around, making dialogue choices, quick time events. The biggest gameplay difference would be the don't move events, and I think it's clear that Unto Dawn has the edge here as well. I know it's kind of unfair though, because the quarry had like no choice but to do their don't breathe sections the way they are, but actually having to hold still your controller in intense situations is gameplay wise just so damn good, and one of the best reasons about it being a PlayStation exclusive. Again though, at the end of the day, the gameplay is basically identical, so while Unto Dawn got the better hold still mechanic, we're really talking about different stories with the same way of playing them. In other words, both games get the point. In some way this could count as a gameplay feature, but I kinda want to give it its own category because I personally love it so much, and that's the premonitions. In my opinion, one of the flagship things in Supermassive Games. In a game that is all about choices, being able to look into the future and see what could happen to your characters is amazing. While the Dark Pictures Anthology all count on the same pictures mechanic, the standalone games do it a little different. Under Dawn is totems that you can find throughout the game and can watch immediately, while the quarry is cards that you can find anywhere but can only watch at the end of each chapter. And it's once again something that comes down to preferences, but I personally think that the way Under Dawn did it is much better. Don't get me wrong, the idea of tarot cards are great and basically having a tarot card reading at the end of each chapter is really damn clever and a cool way to make the premonitions work, but on the other hand it's kind of unfortunate that you not only have to wait to see them, but that they are also so limited, that you can find 4 cards in one chapter yet have to decide which one to look at. It kind of raises the stakes in some way and it's like mentioned a creative way to do it, but it just kind of makes one of the best parts of Unto Dawn feel more exclusive and restricted. Obviously, the fact that you can look at the premonitions in Unto Dawn at all times is a huge plus, but it's too much more things that make it so much cooler to me. On the one hand, it's the fact that they're totems based on indigenous culture, even differentiating in meaning depending on the color, which obviously fits the setting of the game, but what truly gives Unto Dawn the edge in this category is the fact that collecting these totems reveals a playable cutscene that fetches together missing pieces of the puzzle. The way they did the premonition Unto Dawn is simply the blueprint and they haven't been able to reach that level ever since. Arguably the most important aspect of a choice based video game, the characters. In a game where everything is about your choices saving or killing your characters, the characters need to make you care about them. I've made two separate videos quite some time ago in which I rank each individual characters in both games and go into depth and detail for each of them, so if you want to know how I rank these characters in individual games, gladly check that out if you haven't met. But right now I want to compare and determine which game got the better characters, whether it's the protagonist, supporting characters or villains. And Honestly, this is the category where I am by far the most split and undecisive, because the reason we love both of these games are especially the characters. Under Dawn has a great set of protagonists, at the forefront the trio of badass Vanuker Sam, Emily who turns from annoying bitch to impressive survivalist, and Mike who goes from weird jerk to untouchable hero. You got Ashley and Chris which are memorable in their own way because of their relationship, and even the lesser focused characters like Jessica and Matt are very likable and enjoyable to play. On top of that you got Josh, the villain, the victim, the best character in the game and arguably in the top 5 of all Super Massive Games characters. I mean, it's Rainy Malik, goddammit. You also got the badass flamethrower guy, a mysterious helping hand who rounds up a tight to the point cast. The core is a much wider set of characters, but one that is just as good, or at least on the same level. 
We got two badass final girls and Lauren Caitlin, lovable characters like Abigail, divisive and intriguing characters like Jacob, Ryan, and Emma, and one small character that despite little screen time leave an impression, like Max and Nick. At the forefront though is none other than everyone's favorite crane operator, Dylan. A fan favorite for all the right reasons, and someone that makes the quarry so much more enjoyable. Additionally, we got a whole bunch of fun villains with the Hackett family, led by David O'Kent in a short but fun stint as Chris, horror icons playing just as short-lived memorable characters like Constance and Jedediah, good old silly goofball Bobby, and last but not least, the anti-hero, everyone's somewhat favorite sheriff. Travis. Both games have characters that go through a lot and are memorable in their very own ways, from the humor, in their badassery, to the impact and more. Characters is in my opinion the category rounded on the core we truly see each other eye to eye and match each other completely, which is a testament to the ability of supermassive games where if they put in the effort, they can make one hell of a memorable and lovable character cast that you want to keep alive. So, points to both. One thing purposely not mentioned during the character sections because it gets its own category. If there's one thing that truly makes both Antidon and the Quarry, then it's not just the characters, but more importantly, the monsters, the Wendigo and the Werewolf. The big bad, the true thing out there to get us. And honestly, I could be doing some cool tale of the tape type of thing, but let's be honest. The Wendigo wipes the goddamn floor with the werewolf. As a matter of fact, I was never able to look at the werewolf as anything but a cheap Wendigo knockoff, both visually and in terms of strength. It just feels like they were trying to do the same thing without not actually doing the same thing again. The Wendigo got the killer design, the historical and story background that makes it so much more important and memorable, and it's also just so much more terrifying. What made Antidon as unforgettable to me as a young teenager was always, and will always be the Wendigo. That is without a single doubt one of the most memorable creatures ever brought to life in a video game game and the werewolf simply cannot compare, neither in terms of story, no design or anything else. The Wendy goes untouchable and just like for the premonitions, I struggle to see them being ever able to top its terrifying brilliance. Another personal favorite category of mine when it comes to horror games. The deaths. No better way to truly make you feel bad for fucking up your choices than by having your characters go out in a traumatizing way. Similar to the characters, I've made a video in the past highlighting my personal favorite deaths in both games, one of my best performing videos to date until YouTube decided to randomly age restrict it. Boom. So if you want to know my top 5 favorite deaths in both games, that is a video you should watch afterwards. Here you can say that similar to the characters, both games are really on an even level when it comes to the deaths, and that both in terms of visual spectacle and story importance. Until Dawn got ripped off jaws, decapitations, crushed heads and faces, gunshots to the face, eyes getting goked out, bodies crushing grinders or burned alive, a whole damn Sam really. The quarry got drowning, limbs being torn off and heads bitten off, also gunshots to the face, stabbed to death with mirror shards, car accidents, crushed by by cars, killed in the freezer, freezing in the freezer, and a whole lot of other brutalizing ways by the werewolves. While I actually think Unto Dawn has a few more individual highlights, like the grinder and Emily being shot, damn poor girl, <laughs> it also repeats a lot of its deaths, while the quarry overall provides a very good quality and creativity all the way through. Just like for the characters, a category where both games meet eye to eye and deliver several memorable deaths that you will never forget so soon after, so once again, point to both. Before I want to talk about the story, let's talk about the one thing that is without a single doubt the flagship mechanic, even more so the reason we love playing these games in the first place, the choices. I've mentioned before that all I need to know about a supermassive game is, well, that it's a supermassive game, as that means quick time events and choices that decide the fate of my characters, a genre that I desperately need to play more of, as this feeling of everything being up to me is such an amazing experience every time. Now, up until this point it has either been unto dawn or a tie. In this case, I 100 believe that the quarry is superior. Look, Underdawn's butterfly effect is iconic, from the way it's introduced to the way it's being portrayed in the moment where it matters, it's an incredible feature, but when it comes to the actual choices itself, they have never been that impactful. Obviously, you decide where to shoot Emily, or if Ashley is cursed to die and whatnot, your choices will lead to the deaths of characters, but it's kind of it. What I'm trying to say is that the choices in Underdawn may decide your character's fates, but it doesn't really change the game. Underdawn as a whole has this problem, where the story is very fixated and barely changes on replays. You will always end up with the same finale, and everything in between will happen to some degree as well. Your choices decide the fate of the characters, but not the story. For the quarry, on the other hand, the choices aren't just deciding over life and death, but also shape the path of the playthrough. Depending on what you pick, characters may end up in places where they wouldn't be before. Yes, there are fixed paths and things that will always 
happen, obviously, but your choices will determine if Amor and will get infected, which will create new paths depending on what happens. Especially at the end of the game, things can go crazy with Laura and Ryan, everything can end in the Hackett's house, or things go further into the woods, where even here your choices can lead to various different outcomes and endings. What I'm trying to say is, the choices in both games are deciding over your characters, but only in the quarry do your choices also alter the story in a meaningful way. You can play through the quarry several times to get a similar but ultimately different path to the finish. Altered on does not. Does it need to? Not necessarily, but the core is ambitious with what it's doing, has choices from chapter 1 that matter in chapter 10, and ultimately does a much better job at making choices feel impactful. Neither is on a level of complexity as the toy become human, but the quarry certainly got the choices edge of Round the Dawn and gets its own first category. Arguably the second most important aspect of a choice based video game, the story. Many games can excuse a weak story with really fun gameplay, choice based games have all the same gameplay so alongside good characters we need a good story to keep the player intrigued and hook them into playing the game till the end. In the core, both games are quite similar. Group of teenagers stuck at a remote location, human killer running around till you realize there's a monster out there instead with twists included. In reality, the stories are obviously quite different, especially in terms of what happens to the characters, how the game flows, the pacing, and how it all builds towards the ending. One could take a lot of time trying to break down both stories in absolute detail, but I'm trying to keep it to the necessities. Following Unto Dawn's shorter to the point prologue, we do a great job at introducing our characters in the first of chapters, while then splitting them up into several groups as things start to go crazy. From Ashley, Chris and Josh getting attacked by the psycho, to Jessica getting abducted, truly kicking off the action section of the game, but for shifting our attention to Sam, Matt and Emily. The early game is slow but enjoyable, and the mid game is intriguing and fitted with lots of great moments and locations, such as the sanatorium and the fire tower. It isn't until the killer reveal and the third act where Underdawn turns from a great game to one of the greatest games of all time. The moment the way goes unleashed is the moment where everything hits second gear. From the insane sequence with Emily in the mind, to the onslaught onto the lodge and having to save Josh, you're simply hooked to the screen, terrified by the monster, and you to see where everything's going. And to this day, the reveal and realization that Hannah did not just survive the fall, but turned into the wedding goal, all having to do with the mining accident that you kept finding clues about, I get goosebumps just thinking about it. That twist, to this day, one of the best I've ever seen, and left me absolutely speechless. At the end, everything comes together to a big showdown to wrap up a memorable story and amazing game. Antidon's story is far from flawless, especially when looking at how Jessica and Matt are less prioritized and how at one point characters just aren't present anymore. We will always get to Sam and Mike in the end, so everyone else just kind of gets pushed aside once the arc is done, but that ultimately doesn't change the fact that Antidon's story, from start to finish, just while watching along, had me hooked, left me speechless, and simply amazed. The quarry does it somewhat similar, yet also not. After the vanishing of Laura and Max in the prologue, we also introduce each character quite well while quickly establishing that something isn't normal. It doesn't take long to the monsters are after us, way faster than another dawn, which quickly turns everything into chaos with the counters getting split and having to act. The first two chapters take time introducing the characters, chapter 3 through 6 is where everything goes crazy and we start to not just look for help but try to make sense of what's going on. And then there's chapter 7, which tells us exactly what's going on while reintroducing Laura and Max but in a very long Donald process. Generally, it's in this moment where the story has its two major flaws, and that are the fact that our both Max and Nick will always be infected. That does not only turn them into a more supportive character's type of role, but also forces the story into a one direction every time we play the game, and a what if scenario of Laura and Max going to the Harbinger Motel in the beginning would basically not even have the story take place. Anyways, post chapter 7, the final three chapters pick up steam again in an exciting and entertaining way as we try to break the well of curse after a big showdown in the Hackett's house. The ending is where things fall a little bit apart though, and honestly just feels like they just quickly had to wrap everything up, which as we know by now was basically the case due to COVID. It. We figure out why the curse takes place, the backstory is revealed and we can go break the curse ourselves and while not bad, it just fades in comparison to Unto Dawn. Even the most would agree that even without comparing it to its predecessor, the quarry just kind of loses the plot in some way in the second half of the game, which mentioned was due to lack of time of production and a lot having to be cut due to that. For what it is, I still see the quarry story as fun and very different experience to Unto Dawn, despite it being very similar with monsters roaming around and you trying to figure out what happened as you try to survive. But not only was Antonon's story and premise just generally better, it was also much better executed. Especially in terms of pacing, Antonon just flows so much better. We introduce characters 
characters, then do the entire thing with Josh, and having everything turn towards the Wendigo while always having the same main story going on. The chapters are done well, and the story just never has a low moment. The quarry does a long prologue that doesn't matter too much deeper into the game. Yes, the introductions are good too, and till chapter 6, the speed at which we're going and flowing generally feels great, but once we take like an hour to explain things in a horribly slow chapter 7, the game and story just barely recover afterwards, while having to deal with rushing the story to a conclusion. On the indigenous mountain, the mining accident, all leading to the Washington sisters' accident, turning into the nightmare we see unfold, and all the Josh Brink thing going on, it just feels oh, so much more compelling and intriguing than what the quarry provided, while all just done in a much more compact way. Again, the quarry story was fun and compelling in its own way as well, but not only does it fall apart a little bit near the end, it is also, from the core, simply isn't as memorable and special as what Supermassive Games accomplished with Unted On. And last but not least, every great game needs a great finale, and in choice based games even more so, as does keeping alive our characters or letting them die should influence how the ending of our game looks like. When it comes to Under Dawn, I think we can all agree that the ending to the game is absolutely incredible. The final launch showdown is the perfect finale to an epic game, a heart wrenching and goosebumps inducing set piece that left people shaking. As a matter of fact, it's one of the most moments to look out for when watching people play the game, just like it should be with any great ending. Whatever that is, watching them doing amazingly and bringing the characters home safe, or because they fuck up and leave them all to die, like Jacob from the quarry himself. Ah! 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 Go, 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 bitch! Oh my god, Mike! Yeah. Oh, oh, oh my god! No! No! <laughs> no! Oh man, I love you, Zach. The only downside to this finale is the fact that it always happens to the plot armor, which is arguably the biggest flaw in Antidon's story overall to me. Like, we always force Sam and Mike into this position no matter what. Does that make it any less epic? Not really, it fucking rules actually, but another amazing thing following your launch finale is obviously the police hearing, at least of those that are left. It really shows the trauma the characters went through while once again showing that your choices matter. All in all, Unto Dawn's finale is a true spectacle and a worthy conclusion to an incredible story. Now, when it comes to the quarry, a lot of people were disappointed with the finale. As mentioned earlier, COVID led to a lot of things having to be cut, which as we can see impacted in the pacing overall story and therefore the ending of the game. People called it a rushed and just not as epic as Predators did it. You see, what I personally really love about the quarry is the fact that it has several endings, in this case actually several endings that aren't just the same ending with more characters alive or not. Depending on your choices, the best possible ending would be Laura, Ryan and Travis killing Silas as your last act. The thing is, unlike Unto Dawn, this game does not fully reunite all your characters, they get split up and so are the endings which many people saw as a bad thing. Personally, I think this opened up um, what I said is great and that is the actual ending to your game is fully dependent on your choices. It's possible that Travis kills Laura, due to which either Ryan also dies or kills Travis and can't be a sole survivor. Same for Caitlyn, who can be the only one left standing alone at the launch, or even Emma when she turns back from being a werewolf, same for Jacob and even Nick. I think every game can be a sole survivor too. It's even possible that everyone is dead, with the finale being Laura shooting Silas before dying and therefore giving us a no so left alive ending. What I'm trying to say is, none of the endings you can have in the quarry is better than the finale in the large and not at all. No contest, but I am a fan of the fact that the game actually gives the opportunities for several different endings with several different soul survivor options. Unto Dawn does it too, but not on this level. So while the core's endings are far from being as epic or exciting as Unto Dawn's final showdown, I personally still enjoy them for what they are and applaud the variety and different endings obtainable. At the end of the day though, that is not a category towards Unto Dawn. And if I now go back and add together all the points that we've given out today, then the end result it's a very clear and very dominant 10 to 4 victory fronted on. I really love both games for what they are, I truly do, especially given how much both of these games have meant to me throughout the years and how much they've given me at this channel. But at the end of the day, and I think we can all agree on that, fronted on, simply the better game. 
And we're at the end. This is it with my Haunted On versus the Quarry video. A video that took a lot of time to make, especially when it came to the editing. Again, writing the script is always the most fun part. Recording is so and so. But the editing is where it's really <laughs> where it's really annoying and it takes a lot of time. So yeah, please leave a like down below and subscribe if you haven't yet if you want to support me and this video. Other than that, obviously tell me your thoughts about everything we've talked about today in the comments as well. I'm really looking forward to your opinions and a cool discussion. I've already mentioned in between in the beginning that we will be doing the same type of video for the Dark Pages Anthology Season 1 games down the road. And obviously, I have so many other videos still plan to have the Under Dawn remake for the casting of Frank Stone and whatnot. I'm just looking at if I make able to release everything I had in mind but even if not look forward to still a lot of cool content in the upcoming months. Other than that we will be going back to Ghost of Tsushima and Heavy Rain playthroughs we will soon be starting Beyond the Souls I'm looking into starting with Life is Strange series we got Star Wars Outlaws and Assassin's Creed Shadows coming out later this year obviously the casting of Rainstone and the Underdog remake and so much more okay 2024 has basically just started for me this year so much still to look forward to and I'm so excited for it and I hope all of you are as well for now I hope you guys enjoyed the video. I wish all of you a wonderful remaining day and good remaining week. And I'll see you soon with more super massive games videos and other content on my channel. Thanks for watching.